Hi, welcome to Mike's Diabetes World. Oh, oh. With this heat, I'm sweating through pillows and everything. But today I want to discuss what I think they used to call the honeymoon period, but we're going to call it your first year after being diagnosed. Now, after I was diagnosed, I think I pretty well, I think it was about a month in the hospital, three or four weeks at the most. And, you know, I went through the whole thing and the first night I was in there, the doctor asked, do I, or not the doctor, sorry, the health aide asked, what do I want for a snack? I have jello and ice cream, and I, I said both. And my doctor was at the end of the bed and said to me after I asked, he said, oh, sure, you can have both. Surprise, surprise. But, I mean, I wasn't going to get any dinner that night, so. Now, my time in the hospital was pretty uneventful. My neck down to my feet got on TV. That was sort of the big thing they were doing. Uh, thing I think on you know why we need to do children's hospital hey. but things went I remember getting my first shot and that night I couldn't sleep I and trust me I was the one that you know anywhere, any time I could fall asleep. And it's still kind of true now. But that night things were just um uh, things I had so much energy I wanted to get up. I'd gone to the bathroom like ten times. Well you still had to get rid of the sugar. But I felt a hell of a lot better. Now, you will do the exact same thing. You will feel better once your blood sugar start to come down. And they gave me a pretty hefty shot just to get my blood sugar to start to come down. And then all of a sudden, I hit a brick wall and I was out. I think it was like 2, 3 in the morning. But that was sort of like the latest that I had ever stayed up in my life. So, hey. I can remember that we had to learn the CDA booklet. And in it, back then it was called the exchange plan. And, you know, you got so many um, meat exchanges and so many starch exchanges. And we had to learn that. Now, at that time at, where was it? Health Center for Children in the Vancouver General. I had to sit and I had to figure out how much of this I could have and how much of that I could have. And, you know, eventually, okay, I got this. I understand the whole principle. But no, you have to do it every day now. I got taught how to properly mix insulin. Now, I got to say, that's probably something that's a lost art. 
And it's not negative it's a bad law start. It's that people do not mix insolence anymore. And you know, there was a different technique for injecting yourself. And you know, taking a look back and thinking, oh God, we were a little archaic back then. But you move on. I came home from the hospital, we'll just keeping ahead, because this is more about the year after. And you know, for the first week I was you know, perfect, I did everything right on the right amount of time. Like, you know, you couldn't do your urine test before or after you know, if you're running late, oh my god. Because you all heard stories. And it was sort of like the worst things that you people always bring up to you. Not the nurses or doctor, but you know, the first stories getting back to school were Oh well you're gonna lose a leg. You know that you're gonna lose a leg. But I try I was gonna do everything perfect. Oh Yes, I have to, to feel better, and... Sorry, it's very hot. And... I did this, and even... They used to have little urine testing books, and they, where you wrote down what your urine testing was. There was no fancy in-home blood testing. And I sat there and filled out every date. Well... My stepfather said something that pretty well happened. I guess he was foreshadowing the future. What happens if you forget a day? And eventually, I would forget a day. I was pretty damn good on taking my insulin. I used to take in my legs and in my arms. But oh my god, my stomach, oh no. And I was afraid to do it in the stomach. Now, a few videos before this, I had told you that I was afraid to inject. But once, you know, the needle was below the skin, I could do everything fine. It was that mental block. And it took me a while, but it took me even longer to do it in the stomach. And I don't know, I guess six, seven months after being at home, I finally gave in and I injected it into my stomach. Oh, what was all the fuss about? This is easy. But there's going to be new adventures for you of what's working, what's not working. Now, the first day I went to school, the pack. I think I had two reactions. Well, I mean, your, you know, your whole blood test or your whole blood insulin levels were all checked based on you really weren't that active. I think the biggest thing was I had two hours of school each day. And that was pretty much it. So, here I was, I had to get to a different class to do this, get to that, to do another thing. And you know what? It was 
weird, but back then I could feel it, and I usually felt a tingling around my mouth. You know, and some people say, oh, it's like you get you got freezing. Well, you know, it was just a tingle. And then, boom, 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 boom. And then it was just a general unfeeling. Or not feeling while I'm feeling. Yeah, I don't feel. But the worst thing about your first year is that you start learning shortcuts and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And those are the worst things. Oh, well, yeah, I was high one day. I just took extra and slowed them fine. Well, you can't necessarily do that. Back then, we were not allowed to uh, diagnose ourselves with the amount of insulin. Nowadays, it's sort of like, well, you know, you're a couple, you know, you've been high for a couple of days. Let's try two more units of insulin. Now, I don't really diagnose the insulin dose myself because it's all programmed into the pump. And I really, the way my diabetes is nowadays, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. So, you know, really hard to really try new things. I can remember having something extra on a flight from Edmonton to Vancouver. And I got home and my sister said, well, what did they serve you for lunch on the plane? And I went through the menu and there was like lima beans. And she went off on me about, oh, lima beans. Oh, you're not supposed to have that kind of vegetable. Oh, you're only allowed this type of yeah, oh no, what are we going to, well my blood sugar really didn't change anything. So I was thinking, oh well, you know, if I have something different, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now, of course, I know that you count carbs and you dose yourself based on your carbs. So, the biggest thing I'd like you to take away during your first year, first six months, is don't learn the shortcuts. Don't do, you know, it's the worst because your health is better. And if you stick to doing it the long way, then the long way the right way, then you will find you'll have better control. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Have a good night.